So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the, like, come on. Let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code, woof. It's Windows Pro time. Righto, tell you there champs. Now, if you're new around here, come on, sub up, join the Woo Train, hit that bell, ding a ling a dong, and hey, I'd appreciate a like if you want to be a champ there. Now, when I buy a 15 inch laptop, that's my favorite size. This is what I buy. I buy in this premium segment. And yeah, you can buy in the gaming segment, the thin and light gaming segment. You know, your Razor Blades, Alienware M15, Aero 15. And I'll tell you what, they are very tempting because of those graphics cards and you can get 4K options on them, but they are gaming laptops. It is nuanced, but they are. And for what it's worth, if I was going to go with one of those, it would probably be the Aero 15 or the Alienware M15. But when I consider a laptop, I'm not a gamer first. Gaming is like third on my priority list. It has to video edit, it has to have beautiful 4K display, it has to have great day-to-day -day usability. You know, good battery life, good for web surfing, just doing general tasks. And that's where some of those gaming ones fall short a little bit there. And then third is gaming. So given that I'm going to get a 4K high-res display, wide color gamut, I only need 60 frames per second, medium high settings, and I'm happy. And all of these laptops will do that. So when I think of the premium segment, I think of MacBook Pro 15, XPS 15, ThinkPad Extreme, and even the ZenBook Pro. But I think these are the three best ones. So I'm going to compare them. The MacBook Pro 15, XPS 15 9570, and Lenovo X1 ThinkPad Extreme. Now, there will be a new XPS 15 in June. I've already made a video on that. Check that out. So I'm going to compare them now to help you decide which one is for you. So when it comes to price, I spec all three of them up with the one terabyte SSD, 16 gigs RAM, and the highest i7 they had. You can get i9 on the MacBook Pro and the XPS 15. You can't get that on the ThinkPad Extreme. It was supposed to, but the highest model actually is 8850H. So I went for street price, and yeah, it's around $2,000 for the XPS 15 and the Extreme. The MacBook Pro. Three and a half grand for the same configuration. So 16 gigs, one terabyte, and the highest i7. Yeah, $1,500 more US. You could buy one of these Windows laptops and buy an iPhone or an Android phone for the same price as what you buy the Mac. And you know, Apple do have the Apple tax. But at $1,500, that's very hard to swallow. Certainly if price is a consideration, yeah, the Windows laptops are the better bet there. Now we have a look at the specs here on the screen. All pretty much the same CPUs other than the Extreme. You cannot get the i9 or I haven't seen it yet. You know, they're the same 8th generation processors. 32 gig on the MacBook Pro. The XPS 15 and ThinkPad should be able to put 64 gigs in there, no problem. The main difference here is the graphics cards. Both the Windows laptops have a 4 gigabyte GTX 1050 Ti and the best graphics card you're going to get on the MacBook Pro is the Vega 20 graphics. When it comes to build quality and design, I like the MacBook Pro's finish on the outside. I like its uniform thickness. When you open it up, I love seeing that beautiful carbon fiber infinity edge display on the XPS 15. And the ThinkPad has its own sort of thing there. Yeah, it's a bit more conservative sort of business type sort of design. I like it, but it certainly doesn't look like high-end premium like the XPS 15 and the MacBook Pro. All of them are top draw build quality when you get a good one because <laughs> I've had some issues with the MacBook Pro. But yeah, which one do you think is better? Let me know down there in the comments which one you think looks better. It's going to be personal preference, but they're all good except, you know, the X1 Carbon. Us ThinkPad nerds, we know what it is, but no one's going to comment nice laptop when you got a X1 Carbon. Not for looks anyway. When it comes to weight and thickness, it's actually really interesting because the ThinkPad Extreme is actually virtually the same weight as the MacBook Pro. You know, we're talking 1.8 kilos, just over 4 pounds for both of them. But the Extreme is 18.4 millimeters thick, so it is a bit thicker. Whereas the XPS 15 is the heaviest at 4.5 pounds or 2 kilos, and really not that much more, but um, it does have the biggest battery. So yeah, I'll take that any day, the bigger battery and it does have the best cooling too. I'll take that little bit of extra weight, but it is very thin at 17 millimeters, and the MacBook Pro is the thinnest at 15.5 millimeters. And don't be fooled because the MacBook Pro looks really thin on the edges, but it actually has like a bulging sort of belly on the underside. So it is thicker than it looks. When it comes to ports, the MacBook Pro has four Thunderbolt 3 ports, loads of bandwidth there. It's dongle hell. I'm not going to lie. 
this will bother you, it won't. But I haven't actually reviewed the X1 Carbon and it has set some sort of new benchmarks here. You know, having the two Thunderbolt 3 ports also has two M.2 slots. So that means you can put two SSDs in there. You know, has the USB Type A's, SD card reader and HDMI. XPS 15 is great for ports as well. You get your SD card reader, USB Type A, Thunderbolt 3 and HDMI. So when it comes to ports, I do prefer the ThinkPad and the XPS 15. I do like the ThinkPad better because it does have two Thunderbolt 3 ports and it does have two M.2 slots. And the Mac is great if you need a lot of bandwidth and you have to connect a lot of things. But um, it's still, in 2019, it's still annoying to use dongles all the time. When it comes to sound, no doubt the MacBook Pro has the best sound. You know, it's nearly a 10 out of 10 for sound. I don't have to spend too much time on this. Both the XPS 15 and ThinkPad, the sound is one of their weaker parts. It's okay. They're passable. You know, they're 7 out of 10. MacBook Pro has much better sound. When it comes to keyboard and trackpad, Lenovo has the best keyboard without a doubt. The next best keyboard would be the Dell and the MacBook Pro, very shallow keyboard and it has issues. So that is what it is. Some people like the thin keyboard, but without a doubt, the Lenovo has the best keyboard. When it comes to trackpad, the Mac has the best trackpad. 10 out of 10, like it is much better than both the XPS 15 and the X1 Extreme. When it comes to Windows trackpads, they're right up there, but you know they're only like an 8 out of 10 compared to a 10 out of 10 on the Mac. And I would say the XPS 15's trackpad is a bit better than the X1 ThinkPad. When it comes to battery life, it will depend on what display you get. Because on the XPS and the ThinkPad, you can get a full HD version. If you get the full HD version of them, they get 10 plus hours battery life. Now, the XPS has the best battery life, has the biggest battery, 97 watt hours versus 80 watt hours on the ThinkPad Extreme. And the MacBook Pro has a very respectable 83.6 watt hour battery, especially for something so thin. Now, if you're talking about the 4K displays on the ThinkPad and the XPS, then I would say the MacBook Pro has the better battery life or it'll be very close between the XPS 15 and the MacBook Pro. You're going to get your 7-8 hours battery life on those with the high resolution displays. This is where the ThinkPad is let down a little bit. It's a smaller battery, which I don't understand for something that's a little bit thicker. So with the 4K model, you're only going to get, you know, 5-6 hours. So that's the area where it sort of lets me down a little bit, the X1 there. And it was one of the reasons why I returned it. When it comes to display, they all have cracking displays. The issue here was the ThinkPad Extreme had like a pinkish hue in the whites. Like the colors were fine, but the whites had a pinkish hue. I calibrated it up, it was fine. Once you calibrate it, it's as good as any of the other displays. The Mac is a lower resolution, but it is brighter. 100% Adobe RGB with the two Windows laptops. You get 100% P3 with the MacBook Pro at 2880 by 1800 versus 3840 and 2160 on the Windows laptops. And it also isn't touch. To choose a winner out there will just depend on your sort of workflow. Do you need 4K playback? Do you need touch? Would you prefer the 16 by 10 aspect ratio of the Mac? And that's a big deal for me. The Mac's display is actually taller being 16 by 10 and both the Windows laptops are 16 by 9. So there's more real estate with the Mac. Even though it is a lower resolution, it's going to be pick your poison here. But one of the main reasons I did return that X1 Extreme is because of that pink hue in the white. And I don't want to have to be calibrating my display, like if I don't have to. Both the Mac and the XPS, I don't have to calibrate it. It's colors I can trust out of the box. Um, yeah, that X1, they need to start calibrating those out of the factory. Although I just could have got a bad one, who knows. So when it comes to performance, I've done a gaming review on all of them. All of them can game, no problems. The best for gaming is the XPS. Dell will allow the temperatures to go up higher. The Think One Carbon is very conservative. There were some games it was getting up to, you know, the 80s and maybe the 90s. But generally speaking, they control the temperatures and like I could not get that CPU over 80 degrees because they just don't allow it. And this could be fixed with BIOS. Maybe they can get some more performance out of that. MacBook Pro, it is the most thermally limited. It's only an 87 watt power adapter there. Although the graphics card does use less power, it was the fastest in Premiere Pro rendering. That's more to do with metal than anything else. In the timeline video editing, I think the XPS 15 is the best and it's the best for gaming. So I think performance, the XPS is the best. When it comes to gaming, hard to choose between the X1 and the MacBook Pro, but certainly in video editing, it is a bit better than the X1, the MacBook Pro is. I'd like to see Lenovo be a bit more aggressive with the clocks and with the temperatures, but it's a ThinkPad. It's built tough. 
it's meant to last like years. Upgradeability, well, the Mac, forget about it. Both the XPS 15 and the X1 Extreme, you can upgrade the SSDs, you can upgrade the RAM, you can upgrade the Wi-Fi card too if you want. So overall conclusion, which one is the best? Well, it's going to come down to your needs. I think still overall, when you factor in price, upgradeability, ports, battery life, looks, for my preference, I would go to XPS 15 out of the Windows laptops and between the XPS 15 and the MacBook Pro, well, you can't argue the XPS 15 is better value and encompassing all those things I said, the upgradability, yeah. It does work out to a win there. But um, if money's not a consideration and you're never going to upgrade, I could see an argument for the MacBook Pro being the best if that's your sort of preference. So I think with the ThinkPad, it is a great first try. Like seriously, it is great. It's raised the bar in terms of two Thunderbolt 3s, two M.2s, and it is very light. It is such a great first try and you'll be happy with that if you get it. But for me, for my personal preference, I will get either the MacBook Pro or the XPS 15 or both. Um, yeah, that's my thoughts anyway. Let me know what you think. Oh, and I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.